just keep on coming. This one's an Insignia 27 inch. The model of this little gem is an E268MNNKW1BCNN. Think they got enough? You think you got enough letters and numbers in the model number? Observe. You can't turn up the volume, the volume is stuck down. Furthermore, if you press any of the buttons on the side, except for the, uh, except for the input key, which doesn't do anything by the way, press any of the other ones, and it will start cycling through all of your presets for video. If I press any buttons on the side, if I press the volume up, for example, it'll bring that up menu up while I'm pressing the button. Release it, it goes back to presets. All the buttons, volume down, channel up, channel up actually freezes this, then it starts cycling again. Channel down also freezes it. Menu does the same thing, it brings up the menu, menu and the input button does absolutely nothing. This is a clue. I'm thinking we have a switch that's stuck or we have a short somewhere in that switching circuit and of course the power button works. 11 screws later, this one's ready to come apart. A little more reasonable than the 35 or however many screws that other this other monster had. It had too many, but uh, we'll get the back off this thing and uh, see what's going on with it. Now remember, I'm gonna concentrate on the input switches because I think this is a, a switch failure. We can determine if it's a switch failure by unplugging the switches and see if our fault goes away. So once again, we have our, our volume it's stuck down. If I press any of the buttons here, it's gonna start cycling. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just unplug the uh, control cable that goes to the switches. That'll rule out if it's a problem on the switch panel itself unplugging them should stop this from doing it. So this is the cable here that plugs into the switches so I'm just going to unplug it right from here and uh, we'll see if it stops the problem. Oh, notice this, I unplug it and now the volume is going up the full by itself. Oh isn't that interesting, I think we have a short somewhere else on this board, what do you think? Once again I plug it in and we have our pitcher uh, preset cycling one more time. Interesting. Again, if I unplug, this is where the plug goes in up top here. If I unplug it, it stays on whatever mode it's in. It doesn't advance, but it doesn't, uh, the on screen display doesn't go off either. So I guess we need to look at the, uh, the board here and see if there's anything. Now I'm told nothing was spilt on it, but you know how people are. Maybe maybe something got spilt on it or something's on here causing leakage. Let's take a look at the board and see whether we can find anything quick that's on this thing. Set like this obviously is not worth spending a lot of time on, but it'll be interesting to see what's causing this problem. So most certainly any fault that's on this is gonna likely be on the main signal board. We know it's not a power supply issue because the set turns on. We know it's not a T-con problem because the picture is fine. So everything else is on this one board. So I'm going to pull this board out and just take a look at it and see if there's any any uh, indication that maybe some liquid or something may have entered it and is causing a, a leakage path to cause my switches to uh, be shorted out. One thing I've noticed right off the bat is that none of these screws are, are even remotely tight. Every single one of these screws so far has been very, very loose. And these screws do provide grounding, so you know I've said it before about, uh, about grounding problems. We may just have a grounding problem on this board. Wouldn't that be interesting? Just take off that. that uh, grounding tape bonding the the, uh, the shield to the LVDS cable to the chassis because I want to unplug it. So we'll unplug the DVS connector. Maybe you don't need to do that, but here's another screw, you see? Like, there's no torque at all on these screws, so it, it may very well be that it's just a loose, a loose bond. That one's also loose. 
Oh, that one's a little tighter, but it's still nothing really to write home about. At least that one wasn't falling out so loose. The others were no tension whatsoever on them. Okay, let's take a look at this board here. I don't really see anything uh, on the board that jumps out at me. Well, there is some evidence that there's a residue on the board here. I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but there certainly is a residue on the back side of the board here. So I'm just going to clean this off and then we'll, we'll look at the front side and then try reattaching the board and see if it's made any difference. This just could be left over from the manufacturing or something may have dripped down in the back of it. But there certainly is some type of a residue on the board here. So we're just going to clean this up and then uh, give it another test. Okay, TV's back together, circuit board's remounted, grounds are tight. As I, again, I cleaned some residue off the bottom of the board. Power's back on, it will press the power button here. TV's turning on, let's see whether it's going to go back into that volume mode with the volume stuck all the way down and start, oh look, it hasn't done it yet, that's a good sign. And let's see if we can adjust the volume. Volume up. Volume down. Nice easy fix. Nice easy fix. Loose ground screws, more than likely the culprit on this one. I think more so than the uh, little bit of residue. I mean, you can see what I pulled off the board. There was a little bit of gunge on there. Looked like maybe some remnants of rosin and stuff from when it was manufactured. That could have been the problem. I think it probably is safe to say it was the grounds that were the issue on this one. So I hope you enjoyed this quick, easy look at an Insignia TV that the menus were cycling. And uh, have a good day. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.